And this is where we'll start our next chapter. Yeah, so that chapter is mostly uh, time to wean babies again. You've seen that before. If not, there are past videos that you can uh, check out to uh, be sure to kind of catch up on what all that process is about. You know, taking down tag numbers, checking to see if they need worm, trimming feed is necessary, and putting them out on pasture. Uh, oh yeah, look at there. I got a haircut. Oh, oh. One of my Father's Day presents. Anyway, uh, you know, things on the farm aren't always happy and bouncy and dancing and all that because a couple of videos ago I released a video that discussed a ewe lamb that we had that we uh, unfortunately had to put down and how bad that affected me. Um, apparently I offended some, some folks because we've lost several subscribers over that. And uh, if I offended you, I'm sorry. But I'm just going to say this. This is farm life. This is the real thing. It's not all always happy, bouncy stuff. Things happen on the farm. And sometimes those things are ugly. But you just have to deal with it and keep moving. So, remember the cow we talked to about Joe that wasn't feeling well. Really couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. Not showing any classic signs of pneumonia unfortunately we did lose her so this is farming but on the upside we did gain several subscribers also so to you thank you very much i appreciate it and to all of you that have been with us for so long i appreciate each and every one of you if you uh haven't subscribed to the channel uh, please do so. Just click the subscribe. Also check the notifications so that you can be notified when we uh, post new videos online. It would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> but the, uh, grow up, Ben. They're looking good. Some of those have been weaned for 45, 50 days. Like that boy right there, that big boy. Right there. That one, not far behind. That one, not far behind. So they're looking good. We have a replacement ram that's over on the other side, the big guy laying down over there. His name, his name's Buster. Crazy as a loon. But I think he's going to be a good ram for us, a good replacement ram. They decided to go to the other side. Right. Wow.
Well, I've told you what I have to do next. So, I guess we'll end our visit for tonight here. Because, unfortunately, there's apparently quite a few people that can't handle what uh, farming can be. But it's not always beautiful and it's not always happy. Most of the time it is. But sometimes it just sucks. So, time to get down here get busy. Got home, ate supper. Ate way too much supper. Whew. And uh, now it's time to get started feeding everybody. Water tank's been filling on the tractor. I've got a bag of feed to get down here. And then uh, we'll get started. Yes, I know. They all know that it's getting about that time. Yes, hello, Mother Donkey. Hello, everybody. Hello. It's getting about that time. The uh, other bulk bin is uh, running low. About time for us to make the determination. We're uh, not feeding near as many head as we have. If we're going to continue doing the bulk feed, or if we're going to go back to a bag feed. Well, I am um, not going to complain, but we're getting a little bit more away. But that's not going to be much fun for you because we're not going to be able to get much video of feeding the outside pins. Because I don't want to get the camera wet. It's the uh, only one I got. But I will catch what I can to feed the inside. done in here and then it'll be time for the cows or the pigs and the cows I just don't think you can believe how grateful I am that we're still getting some rain even though it's not a whole lot it's enough to keep things going I don't know if you can really see it with the naked eye I can barely see it in person there is a rainbow right there looks just like a cloud streak on the camera. Uh, there. See it? Yeah. As long as that don't mean that the rain is over. funny how they kind of hang in family groups. In this feeder you have Jacole and her calf right here, Jet on the other side and her calf right there and then over on the other feeder you have 
uh, over here, Jayla, and then kind of in the middle on the other side, a little red sticking up over there, that's Layla, her daughter. Pebbles in the middle, Pebbles calf right there, Layla's calf back there, and uh, Pebbles mama on the other side. <laughs> so they kind of divide it up into, into uh, family groups. Anyway, all right, well that's gonna be about it for tonight. So we'll see you again tomorrow. Well, uh, <laughs> we have another brutally hot day underway. And of course, I've got a bush hog. While I'm doing this, I do have a uh, follow up on the uh, situation with the cow that we lost, Joe. When things like that happen, I like to I like to try to find answers and that's how you learn and uh, after talking with several other cattlemen in this area you know have you ever had anything like that happen you ever had anything like that happen? no no I found a couple that had had similar things happen and uh, just a second so after them explaining to me what they found, we'll say that I did a uh, post-mortem. We'll leave it at that. And come to find out, they were right. She did not have pneumonia. Uh, apparently, what had happened was somewhere out grazing, whether she picked it up from an old piece of a hay bale or what it was, I don't know. But she managed to get a stick lodged near the back of her throat between her jaw bones and unfortunately there was just no way of knowing uh, what was going on that's why she wasn't able to eat she didn't drink a whole lot now why she responded a little bit to the antibiotics i can't tell you unless when it wedged in there it had broken through the tissue the gum tissue and it was starting to get infected, so she started responding a little bit to the antibiotics because of that. I don't, I don't know. So, now I know. So if it ever happens again, I know something to check for. And that's, uh, that's what a lot of this is. It's a learning process. Sometimes those lessons come at a hard cost. But as long as you learn from it, you can have some ideas on how to prevent it from happening again. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this tank off, get the bush hog hooked up, and we're gonna get busy.
Well, one more field done. Well, summertime has set on us very hard. On my way down, I know it's hard to tell right now because there is a nice little breeze blowing. But before 11 o'clock this morning, the heat index was already at 103 by 11 this morning. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's set on us hard. So, I'm going down, double checking, making sure the uh, fans in the lamb barn are still functioning. They did manage to unplug them last night. Fortunately, it was before we came down to feed. I'm going to have to do something with that so it stays out of the way. Those curious lambs. Yeah, back on the bush hogging today. I've got this field done. Our front field. Got the top third of it done, which is where usually our heaviest concentration of Bermuda is. And I think I might have got it at a good time because I could get under a lot of the thistle and the goat weed and not have to really cut into the Bermuda that much. Bermuda, a lot of times when it first stops, pop, starts popping up at the first of the season, it'll send out ground runners first, it'll green up, it'll send out those little runners, those will set root and then it starts growing up. This field's a little different and you have to do it in sections because the ground lay is so different where you would constantly be raising and lowering on the bush hog as you went. So it's just easier to uh, kind of break it up in sections and do it that way. Oh, there it is. It looks a lot better. 